I like the bloopers. Wait, we need to back up this cat anymore. Hi. It's all up in my Welcome back to another episode of Baby. Jess and Taylor. Scoop back. Too close. <clears throat> Choke me. Oh gosh, that Look. first question's a bomb. <laughs> you do the intro this time. Okay. You're not gonna do the intro. You probably are terrible yeah, at it. I got it. this. I got this. All right, go. Have faith. Hi. Welcome back to another episode of... No. <laughs> You're such a hater. Perky, perky. All right. Are we recording? <laughs> We've been recording. Okay. This is normal. But I don't look like a lift. You lift. You look like... Oh, okay. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So as you guys see, our new... Uh, what is it called? Name. Our new YouTube name is Jesse and Taylor. It used to be Heavenly Vlogs, but we changed it because we got married and this is our joint channel now, so. Is it Jesse and Taylor or Jesse and Taylor? Jesse and Taylor. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's good. I go first. Anyways, we're gonna do some questions and answers. I asked a lot of you some questions on my Instagram. For those of you who do not follow me on Instagram, it is heavenly underscore treasures one you guys um asked a ton of questions some personal stuff some nosy stuff some interesting stuff so thank you to all of you y'all are nosy but anyways bless your heart bless your heart so i'm gonna go with the first question oh gosh that's all right a, you do one and then you do another bomb. I know. am i asking you the question yeah just read it out loud okay do you want to say who the question's from? Nah. No. We'll keep it private. So the first question, when are you guys planning to have cute kids? Oh, cute. I like that. Do you want to answer or should I? You can do it. I should do can it. Can we talk about this? Now? I mean, I'm just going to answer it. So our plan is to have kids pretty much right away. Really? Yeah. You didn't tell me this. Yeah, because we're both still <laughs> young enough to where we're going to be younger parents, which we want to have... A good amount of energy to raise kids we want to be able to go out and do stuff with our kids and feel good but we're also old enough to where we're mature enough and we have a little bit more life experience to where we're gonna be good parents and we're not just jumping into it when we don't have our own lives figured out yeah, yeah. what he said it's good huh yeah that was good yeah so we don't really have a timeline we're just allowing the lord to take the lead in our lives and we're just gonna roll with the punches in life I am 32, so, yeah, yeah, <laughs> or how do you maintain a God-centered relationship? That's a good question. That's you. Spending time with the Lord together, even if it's just for a little bit, um, like, we like to pray in the mornings, like, for our breakfast, as a couple, we'll sit down and have breakfast. Or we'll just like sit in bed and have coffee and read our Bibles. Um, and then sometimes we'll have our one-on-one -on -one times with the Lord, whether it's praying or like reading by or doing my Bible study on my own at the dinner table. So that's pretty much how I start every morning is reading our Bible yeah. and then she makes breakfast. I just made the camera go like this. <laughs> Again. Don't do that. But she makes breakfast and then we kind of we kind of pray for our food, but we also pray about kind of whatever's going on at that time. So we pray for like different situations, different stuff within our relationships, other people, stuff like that too. We also have good discussions about different things, like spiritual things too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or we'll start like talking about who needs prayer. Yeah. Like if it, one of his friends needs prayers, he'll let me know, and then we just I don't know. We just try to keep God in every little thing that we do throughout our day. Yeah. I think it starts with the individual, though. I think you gotta mm -hmm. have your own relationship with Christ and your own reading time and praying time, and then you have that together, too. But I think having that individual is also really important. Yes. Yeah. What was your first impression of each other? Mine was like, whoa. And I hid behind the door or the wall. Oh, are we talking about in person? Yeah. Oh, I got really shy. You did. And I don't get shy or nervous, but I got really shy and nervous. She opened the door, I opened the door, yeah. and I saw her for the first time, and I was just like... It was like slow motion yeah. situation, and I got nervous, and I hid behind the wall, and then I poked my head 
And I was like, ooh, he cute. And then I was just kind of looking at her smiling. <laughs> I didn't really know what to say. Yeah. That was the first time we saw each other. Yeah. Um, the next question is, how many kids do you guys want? Two? Two. I would say two. Yeah. In an ideal world, one boy, one girl. Yeah. I mean, if we want a third, that wouldn't be until we had two and see what that's like first. But well, I think we want yeah. two and then we want them no more than two years apart because we want to be able to have them go to school together and be each other's friends and be able to relate to each other. So two kids, ideally, no more than two years apart. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I want my kid to be like close in age so they can get along and they have some kind of like bond because me and my brothers are like four years apart and that always kind of like interfered with our relationship and I wouldn't want that for my other kids. So yeah, maybe just two kids. Yeah. Um, we'll start with two. One. One. We'll start with one. Yeah. That's how that works in those times. Okay. Yeah. That'd be scary. Uh, were you guys concerned about each other's age when you just started talking? No, I was. Yes. I'm four years older than him. It didn't bother me at all. It bothered me. I didn't care. Because I'll be honest, and he knows this, I always thought that I would end up with somebody a lot older than me. He's mature, so that helped. Um, so yeah, he's very mature for his age. He's 28 and I'm 32. So yes, age was definitely a concern, but I don't think age should be an issue in a relationship at all. No, if you guys connect, um, who cares of the age, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if, even if he's a lot older than you, or she's a lot older than you. We're four years younger than you. Love is love, who cares, so. Are you both part of a church? So we're actually currently looking for a church right now with the whole COVID situation. A lot of the churches around here were closed and I actually just moved here too. So I went to my dad's church in California. And then when I moved here, we kind of want to find a church that we both really like. She's tried out a couple churches here because she just moved here too a couple years ago. So she's tried out a few different churches. Um, but now that we're married, I kind of want to find a church that also has some young kids in it yeah. just because if we plan on having kids right away I'd like our kids That's to be good. around other kids and have good Christian friends and stuff like that too to grow up with um because I know I had that when I was a kid and that was very beneficial for me so yeah so for now we've been watching a lot of his father's uh YouTube yeah. channel uh his YouTube channel's name is footnotes we watch it whenever we can um if you guys don't know he's a pastor and he teaches a lot of like what does he teach for you? Um, I mean, he teaches the whole Bible, but right now he's focused on Revelations and he's Revelation. teaching an entire study on Revelations and End Times. It's really awesome. So check him out. It's at Footnotes. It's a YouTube channel. It's F-O-O-T-E Notes because that's our last name is Foot, like Foot with an E on the end. One thing too to talk about when we're deciding a church, kids being there is not the deciding factor in what church we're going to pick. It's really the teaching. The teaching is really going to be what decides the, the church we stay at. The doctrine, how deep the message is. Mm -hmm. We don't go to a church for the worship. We don't go to a church for what they offer outside of the service. It's yeah. really all about the teaching and how deep the doctrine is and how good the pastor is. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the main thing that yeah. we talked about. So we are just like, we're going to start looking around. Um, hopefully, Lord willing, next Sunday, we're going to go visit a new church. So pray for us for that because we really want to find a good church um, here in North Carolina. Yeah. And when are you guys doing a live fellowship? Mm -hmm. Miss you, girly. We um, did just talk about this. Well, to be honest with you guys, now that I'm married, like a lot of things have changed in my life, like my schedule, and I'm just trying to find a routine. But of course, eventually I want to start doing lives, uh, live YouTube videos again. I just love reading your live comments and interacting with you guys and reading Bible verses together and just talking about the Lord. It's so cool to do that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it too. yeah, I just like yeah. talking to people. She does. She loves you guys. Yeah. Like you can just tell when she's on camera. I used to watch her lives too before we were even together and she yeah. just really loves all the people there. So. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be doing that again and I'll do it with him too. Like we'll just sit down and just chat with you guys and answer questions and pray for some of you. Jimbo, what is the temperature in the house like? Do you guys like the cold or hot? I'm assuming. You guys are so nosy. That's such a funny one. <laughs> what do you have the temperature set? I let her decide. Well, now that the weather's like a lot cooler in North Carolina, I turned off the auto on the AC off. 
So it's like maybe 66 degrees right now inside the house. I will say though, she does like it a lot colder than I do. I love it freezing. She likes really being cold and yeah. bundling up. Yeah, I like it cold. I like to wear my little socks at home. And... Yeah. Oh no, and snuggle. Um, where did we meet? Yeah, where did you guys meet? I was looking... No. Uh, where did you guys meet? So, do you want to get into that story? Um, just briefly, we met on YouTube. Um, he watched one of my videos. Okay, it's kind of funny though. We got to tell the whole story. We're going to tell the story here. Wait, so, we already told the story. It's in our... But I tell it funny. What happened to your hair? <laughs> tuck it <Fix> in. Fix it. <laughs> you got to tuck it in. <laughs> No, babe. It's like poking. You know, like, pull it off? Yeah. Like this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look like a good boy. He's so good. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> don't you ever do that again. Yeah, that was bad. No, babe. I like you like this. Like this? Yeah. No! <laughs> Stop. Be good. Okay, can you I put my hat like, on No, I like you without no, a hat. No, because it looks weird to no. start with the hat on. No, babe. And then <laughs> We do a lot of editing on this part. No, people know that yeah. I'm indecisive. Oh, I don't like it. It's so long. Look emo. And your hair is sticking up. What happened to your hair? You need a haircut. I should do it. I should cut your hair. You cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. Did you just cowlick my hair? Yeah. I don't think anyone's done that to me since I was a kid. <laughs> when your mom's like... Okay. Like wipes your face. Okay. Oh, we're putting the hat back on. Okay. Yeah. What was the question? Oh no. Oh, how do we meet? So let me tell this a little bit better. We met on YouTube. Go, baby. Don't make it more funny though. All right, go. Okay. I was watching a lot of Christian YouTube videos, and my sister and my wife had a similar dream, and so my sister sent me her dream and was like, "Hey, check out this girl. She had a similar dream with me," and I was joking. So I was like, oh wow. I was like, that girl is beautiful. And she's a Christian. I was like, I'm gonna marry that girl. That's what I said to my sister. But I was totally joking because. That's crazy. That's crazy, right? right? But God was like, I see you. Yeah. Yeah, well played, God. We met on YouTube. I sent her a message and it was totally not flirtatious, even though I was like, dang, she's real attractive and she loves the Lord, and she has a heart for people, it's like, that's super cool. But it wasn't flirting, it was just like, hey, my sister's dream did this and this in my life, so I just wanna encourage you to keep making videos because you never know how it's gonna impact other people's lives. And then we just talked about like Christian stuff and spiritual matters and we shared scriptures together. And then eventually she was like, dang boy, like, you so cute. And I was like, thanks. And she was like, we should hang out sometime. And I was like, "I right, cool. Babe. That's not how that went down. That's <laughs> how I remember it. No. 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 That's how I remember it. No. Well, the YouTube thing is true. The dream is true. He just got a little cocky there. So is the second. rest of it. Besides the. But. Besides the dang boy. Yeah, I didn't that say that. Wasn't true. No. But we just became like good friends on social media, and then eventually, I think I asked him for his number. So ladies, don't be afraid 2020. to say something nice back. <laughs> Can a person get baptized again if the first time they were young and didn't know much? So I Can would say, this one? yeah. Okay, I got this one. <laughs> Getting baptized when you are a baby or a child does nothing, mm -hmm. okay? Baptism is a sign to the rest of the world and it's a sign to your church and it's a sign to God that you're making a commitment to walk in the Christian life, right? You're making a commitment to walk in a way that is pleasing to him and it's kind of a um, showcase to everybody else that, hey, this is my new life, right? The old me is dead and the new me is my new nature. So when you're a baby, you can't make that decision for yourself, right? You can't decide that you want to be a Christian at that point because you don't really know what it means to walk with God. You don't know what it means to have a relationship with him. You don't really understand what Jesus did dying for your sins on the cross. Mm -hmm. So being baptized when you're a baby or a young child means nothing, okay? Being baptized is something you do after you become a Christian, after you've already given your life to Jesus. Being baptized does not save you, right? Think about people that die on their deathbeds and make that choice to repent and serve Jesus and follow him and put their faith in him. Just like the thief on the cross, right? It's a great example when Jesus said, today you will be with me in glory. That guy didn't get baptized to go to heaven. 
Mm -hmm. Right? So baptism is something you do after you become saved and after you become a Christian, but it does not save you. Good thing. That's really good. Thanks, I think about that. Uh, I also think that if you're going to get baptized, know what baptism means. Study it um, and really understand the meaning behind it and how serious it is. It's a commitment um, to public, God. Public declaration. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. It's a public declaration yeah, it sure of your is. faith. Yeah, so just study on it and make sure you know what it means. That way it's more profound to you as you do it. Because a lot of people do it just because everyone else is doing it. And you need to know why and take like a little study of the meaning behind it. One thing you like most about each other. I like a lot of things about him. I know, I was trying to think. I was like, what things the most? Um, I like that we just laugh together, honestly. Yeah, like that's something so I think much. is just so cool that we just make each other laugh and it's genuine. Yeah. Like we just have so much fun together just being silly. Like it's not, everything doesn't have to be serious all the time or not dramatic. We do this baby talk sometimes for fun with the dogs and with each other, just for fun and like in our own private time with each other. What do you call Leo? Bad boy. He's a bad boy. <laughs> Wait a bad boy. So we do things like this and just make each other laugh. Yeah. Um, and then he bit her the other day. Yeah. So we say, don't bite me, bad boy. Oh yeah, he bit yeah. me. Uh, just we like how we can make each other laugh. Yeah. Yeah. That's an important one. Yeah. Keep having fun. You don't have to guys get married. Like, have don't take it too times. serious. There's some yeah. marriages that make me want to cry. Mm -hmm. They just never laugh. They're always miserable. Preach. Yeah, you, you, you know. I know. Oh, you know. This is not a question, but I like how you did your wedding. I really loved it. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. That was all her. She planned the entire thing. I mean, it wasn't a big wedding. Yeah. My ideal wedding would have been in November when the weather's a lot cooler and I was going to have like 40 people at least, like some of his family from Cali and friends. Yeah. I was going to have my family fly in, but with COVID, we just had to do something quick and easy. Um, but yeah, thank you. Um, we do have the wedding video posted on this channel, so check it out. Um, we should be getting our wedding photos soon, too. Yeah. Yeah, probably in the next week or two, I'd say. Okay, so this girl says, pardon the question, how can someone marry someone without knowing if they are compatible intimately? God bless you both. That's a good question. You want me to take that? I'm not, not answering that. I'll answer it. <laughs> okay, here's my idea. All right, here's my whole thought process. God knows the perfect partner for you, mm -hmm. right? And there's two ways we can tackle this question. So I think God knows a perfect partner for you. So that means he knows a perfect partner in everything, right? So he already knows who's gonna be compatible with who when it comes to those more intimate details of the relationship. So you just gotta trust that the Lord knows. And even if you guys get married and it's not great right away, you communicate, right? You kind of just, you gotta be honest with each other. Like marriage is just about being honest. If you try and sugarcoat things, you're not gonna grow in your relationship. So you gotta be honest with the other person about like what works, what doesn't work, what you like, what you don't like, right? Yep. But I think God knows a lot of times like who's gonna be compatible with who, who works well with who. Yeah, he made a partner especially for you. So yeah. just trust the process that God started and just pray about the relationship. If you say, Lord, please help me find a godly man, I'm sure he's gonna put the right puzzle piece in your life, you know? Yeah, So that's good. Yeah. How was your honeymoon? It was great. We went to a theme park. Which was terrible. And yeah, with COVID, it wasn't as yeah. fun, but we made the best of it. We went to Florida, we stayed in a nice Airbnb home. It had like a private pool. On three, can we say what the best part of the honeymoon was? Don't say anything to me right now. I want to be spontaneous. I don't know. Okay. No, just first thing that comes to your head was the best part of the honeymoon. Like, best thing we did. Mm. Ready? Three, two, one. Lazy BF River? BF Chang's. Oh. BF Chang. Lazy River was pretty cool, too. We did the Lazy BF River. BF Chang's was like... In our Airbnb. I have never been so satisfied with food in my life. Oh, that was so good. In our Airbnb community, um, it had like a lazy river. And remember just looking at each other from across the table, just complete satisfaction, just. What is your favorite thing to do together and how long did it take for Taylor to propose? <laughs> okay, so what is your favorite thing to do together and how long did it take for Taylor to propose? Okay, so. Wait, I want to answer. Okay. 
So there's two things I love doing with him. I love going to Target or any store and just browsing. He doesn't complain. That is mind blowing for a guy. He just goes along with it. I'm like, look, candle. He's like, okay, I'll smell it. Like he doesn't complain. I think that's because I can just make anything fun. He is so patient yeah. and fun and yeah. And then another thing I love doing is just laying in bed, watching TV together. Yeah. Doing nothing. Don't tell him what we're watching right now. What are it's we watching? It's just girly. Oh. I don't want to talk about it. He's, he's interesting. He's not like typical guys. He'll like watch anything. It's a plus. She lied. <laughs> How long did it take for Taylor to propose? I'm not answering that. I'll answer it. The second date. Ooh. I proposed to her on the second date. Babe, you're gonna say that on camera? Yeah. On the internet? Yeah. Cause I knew. I prayed about it. I got confirmation. We had been talking mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. Before our even our second date. Yeah. Cause we were just friends first. So we talked every day for hours. Hours and hours every day. So I got to know her really well first. I asked all the right questions. I prayed about it every day. I went on hikes. I fasted. Yeah. I asked the Lord for confirmations. He gave me many confirmations. He spoke through Your sister. his word. He spoke through my sister. He spoke through friends. He gave peace to both of our parents when we were kind of talking about it beforehand. My parents had peace about the situation and her parents had peace about the situation, which blew my mind because they'd never met me before. And my dad hates Every Everybody. guy that I've ever mentioned to yeah. him about. Like, even as a guy friend, he'd be like, that is not of God. I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> I just knew. Yeah. Like, I just knew you were the girl I was going to marry. Like, I just... Aww. Yeah, I just loved you, so I knew. Why waste time? I knew it. Yeah. It would happen soon. The way he looked at me at, uh, during FaceTime, it was so cute. He just gave me that look. It was our second time hanging out together in person. He was crazy enough to propose. It's just like, oh. so ladies, if a guy truly is committed, he will do the impossible. He did everything in such a short, quick time. I don't know. He was just like determined, like, this is what I want. I'm going to make it happen. And he moved from Cali to North Carolina across the U.S. for me. And he could have had anyone else. I thought you were going to say across the universe. Yeah, universe. And he could have just been with anyone in Cali, but no, he saw what he wanted. This humble little girl in North Carolina. Beautiful, gorgeous who, girl. Who says, y'all. Who loves the Lord. And says, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> and support. I, and I love the Lord. And bless your heart. Bless your heart. And I do love the Lord. But yeah, yeah it was, was just, it was so humbling how he just dropped everything. So yeah, it took him. Um, Second date. Second date. Second date. Wow. I got a ring before I even met her in person. Cause I knew. <laughs> I waited till the second date, but I got a ring before I even met her in person. And the Lord made that happen. That's actually a crazy story. That's actually a crazy story. Oh my gosh. She's <laughs> not even wearing it. Well, this video is over. <laughs> I'm not mad. <laughs> I totally forgot. I've been having a bad day, guys. She hasn't been having a bad day. Why did you guys not want to wait longer for getting married? Don't be a hater. <laughs> Why didn't we want to wait longer? Ooh, we didn't answer this one. Oh, that's a good one. This is a really good question. So somebody asked, yeah. do you think tough times in a relationship are a good thing or a bad thing? I honestly would prefer for it not to be bad. I think they're good things. I like it when things are good because I get like anxiety and I just don't like drama. I like peace and quiet. I just don't like change. So, I think it's good. I think it's good to go through tough yeah. times with your partner because but. you learn how that person responds in mm -hmm. tough situations but you also learn how to communicate to somebody during tough situations. Cause you can communicate to somebody and they can hear you, but they might not listen to you because you didn't communicate in a way that they wanted to be communicated to. So learning how to communicate to a person in a way that they'll listen and really take it to heart 
in a situation that might be uncomfortable or where you're in an argument is really important. I just don't like fighting with him. Yeah, I mean, I don't like fighting with her either. It's horrible. Like, I'd much rather just laugh and have fun all the time, but let's be realistic. Relationships are relationships and they take work. Yeah. And you're gonna have disagreements yeah. and there's gonna be times where you guys argue about certain things, but it's learning how to communicate, right? And how not to communicate and how somebody likes to be communicated to. Yeah. And I think you grow closer, honestly. I think you grow closer after you guys go through something like that because it just helps you appreciate the good times a little bit more too, as weird as that is to say. Yeah. Like when you go through something bad, you kind of realize how good things have been, mm -hmm. you know? Because sometimes you can take how good things have been for granted. So it's like, when you guys go, do go through some tough times, mm -hmm. it helps you kind of reestablish how good those good times are and how important those are to like really cherish how much those matter. Yeah. Yeah. Just rather not argue. I mean, I'd rather not argue either, but. I want to chase butterflies with him in a field of flowers. But it happens, you know, you're going to bump heads with somebody. Yeah. Um, or with him. Or, yeah, with your partner. So. Just any. Yeah. Yeah. You just have bad days, but you just fix it. If you love each other, you try to communicate, give each other a little space. But don't go to bed angry. That's a big no-no. No. You don't go to bed angry. Yeah. And, and don't just, leave a lot of time. Yeah, in between. In between. Like when you guys get into an argument, if you guys are not talking for a while or you got to think about something or process something, don't let it just drag out. Because the longer you let something drag out, the more it builds bigger, up. Yeah, the more it builds up and the more negative thoughts build towards that person, right? It kind of builds up. You start thinking really negatively about the person. You start telling yourself things that aren't necessarily true about the other person. So don't let those fester and grow. Kind of address it right away. And you gotta let your pride go, right babe? Yes, yeah, like, you gotta let your ego, ego go. Big time. I'm that I'm still working on that. Sometimes I'm yeah. like, no, I'm right. But then I'm like, uh. Oh. Doesn't always matter who's right in a situation, honestly. <laughs> Is my hair doing it again? Yeah. yeah. It's okay, it's yeah. yeah, it doesn't always matter. Thank you, babe. But it doesn't always matter who's right. Yeah. Right, as long as you guys can come to an agreement on how things need to proceed and how to better handle certain situations. It doesn't necessarily matter who's right when it comes to all the little small details of you said this, or you said mm -hmm. this. Like, sometimes those things just aren't important. Yeah. Like it's the core issue that you guys are arguing about that's probably the most important. Not the, well, you said this, you said this. That's just holding on to stuff. Just come up with an agreement, put yourself in the other person's shoe, yeah. and then apologize at the end of the day. Like you're in a marriage. You can't just like throw things away like, yeah. oh, this person's disposable. Like you're you're together forever. Yeah. And once you lose that respect, I feel like it's game over. Yeah. You don't want to lose your respect for your partner. Also too, when you forgive somebody, actually forgive them. Mm -hmm. Like don't hold on to those things and bring them up later. Like my favorite example is how Christ treats our sins or how God treats our sins because of what Christ did for us, right? It says he casts them as far as or as far as the east is from the west. So what that means is you can keep going east and you'll never go west, mm -hmm. right? Because you can continually travel east, so you'll never run into west, which means he's completely eradicated and erased it in his mind. So when you forgive somebody, you've got to eradicate it in your mind and not ever bring it up again, because that's not truly forgiving somebody. Yeah. Right? You're just holding on to that. That's a good it's one. A grudge. Yeah. I think that's it, babe. We answered nice. all the questions. Um, yeah, just let us know, like, if you have any more questions for us, we love reading comments. Um, just because I don't reply to all of them doesn't mean I don't read them. I truly appreciate the interaction. And also, I wanted to do like a giveaway um, when we hit 5,000 subscribers. So make sure that you guys subscribe, like, and comment all of our videos. Um, hit the bell notification so you have like an alert on your phone, on your computer. When we upload a video, so you can drop everything and you run. <laughs> and you watch our videos. Yeah. And thank you guys too that have subscribed because we've had a good amount of new followers lately yeah. too. So we appreciate you guys just supporting and just being loving in the comment section. You guys actually make us laugh and you encourage us to keep making good videos. So thank you guys. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in our next video. Bye.